Hey everyone, Josh here from Panels to Pixels. Last time on the show we were counting down my top 20 to 11 comic book video games of all time to celebrate the channel crossing 20,000 subscribers. If you haven't watched the first part of my list then I highly recommend checking it out first, but you know, whatever, you do you. But this is it, the top 10, the creme de la creme of capes and consoles, sprites and spandex, panels to pixels, if you will. Before we launch into the list, I just want to remind you that this is based on my opinion and my opinion alone. If you disagree, well, that's great. Hell, let me know in the comments or on Twitter, at Panels to Pixels. I can and will talk about this stuff all day. Okay, no more preamble, it's time for Carnage. Number 10, Spider-Man and Venom, Maximum Carnage. 1994's Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage is a side-scrolling beat-em-up for the SNES and Mega Drive. Amazingly, it's one of the most faithful adaptations of a comic story to a video game, with panels ripped directly from the 14-part comic book crossover and used as cutscenes. And then there's the hard rock soundtrack. I have this recurring joke on the channel where the main theme from Maximum Carnage interrupts me during a video, and I say, NOT NOW MAXIMUM CARNAGE! I'm not sure if anybody but myself finds it funny, but the real meaning behind it is that since Panels to Pixels first began a year and a half ago, I've been writing a video about Maximum Carnage that has become my magnum opus. At this point, I don't know if it will ever see the light of day, or if I'll just keep on saying, NOT NOW MAXIMUM CARNAGE! But either way, I feel inextricably linked to this game, and it's a part of the channel's DNA. Number 9. X-Men Origins Wolverine I don't hate the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie as much as a lot of people do. It's bad, sure, but it's goofy bad, and there is a world of difference between goofy bad and taking itself too seriously bad. <coughs> Dark Phoenix. <coughs> but regardless, I think we can all agree that X-Men Origins Wolverine, the game, improves on the film in almost every way. I've talked about this title a few times on the channel. It's a hack and slash, God of War style action game with buckets of charm. From the brutal, blood-splattered combat to the way that Wolvie heals himself in real time, covering his adamantium skeleton in fresh flesh. Take on a 50-foot sentinel single-handedly, or just admire the masterful voice acting by Hugh Jackman. Make no mistake, this is the ultimate Wolverine experience in video games, and if you haven't already, you owe it to yourself to play it. Number 8. X-Men Mutant Apocalypse Another X-Men game? Seriously? Okay, I know this top 20 list has been pretty mutant heavy so far, but this is the last one, I promise. When I was writing this list, I almost cheated and made this a joint 8th place between X-Men Mutant Apocalypse and its spiritual successor, Marvel Superheroes in War of the Gems. When it comes down to it though, I've got to give the win to the X-Men. Better music, better stage design, and special moves that are easier to pull off. This Final Fight style game for the SNES lets you play as Wolverine, Cyclops, Beast, Gambit or Psylocke in a game that is peak 90s X-Men. Face off against Sentinels, Juggernaut, Apocalypse, Omega Red, The Brood and of course Magneto. This game looks fantastic with sprite work that brings Jim Lee's artwork to life and firing off optic blasts with Cyclops or throwing energy charged playing cards with Gambit has never been more fun. Number 7. Ultimate Spider-Man for a long time I went back and forth between Ultimate Spider-Man and another title on this list as my favourite Spider-Man game of all time. Having replayed both of them recently, it's clear to me that the gameplay of Ultimate Spider-Man doesn't hold up so well, with some finicky web-swinging physics that have you rattling around New York City face-planting tall buildings. That being said though, this game is straight up gorgeous. The cel-shaded graphics still look great today and I wish more developers took this approach when translating comics to video games. The story by Brian Michael Bendis keeps everything grounded in the lore of the Ultimate comics and makes for a very entertaining way to spend a weekend. It's a short but sweet campaign with a difficulty curve that ramps up fairly quickly but pushes you to keep getting better at web swinging and kicking ass. And then there's the opportunity to play as Venom. Now I never loved Venom as much as a lot of 90s kids, but switching back and forth between the fast and furious acrobatics of Spidey and the hulking I just ate a child and now I'm going to lob an armoured truck at a helicopter ness of Venom does keep things feeling fresh. Ultimately, Ultimate Spider-Man may not be the Ultimate Spider-Man game, but it's pretty amazing nonetheless. Number 6. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles as it was for us in the UK, was a phenomenon that I just caught the tail end of as a kid. 
I remember having the t-shirts, the action figures, and even this dope pair of roller skates. But by the time I was watching cartoons on a regular basis, the Turtles had fallen out of favour and been replaced by the likes of Batman the Animated Series, X-Men, and Spider-Man. I actually didn't play Turtles in Time until a couple of years ago, having never owned an SNES growing up, but boy am I glad I sought this one out. The gorgeous visuals and big beautiful sprites make you feel like you are actually playing the cartoon, and the characters literally leap out of the screen at you. <laughs> well, almost literally. Some of the best music ever committed to the system, along with catchphrases that I quote on an almost daily basis, and perfectly balanced co-op gameplay, make for a game that's perfect to enjoy with a few friends and some slices of Zar. Cowabunga. Number 5. Batman Arkham City While Arkham Asylum broke the mould for comic games, Batman Arkham City set the template for all other open world superhero games to follow. Both games brought some much needed legitimacy to the comic book game genre, and we have the Arkham series to thank for games like Spider-Man PS4 and the upcoming Avengers game. Batman Arkham City features a very different environment to that of Arkham Asylum. The Metroidvania style map of the first game has given way to a sprawling cityscape that allows you to skulk around on rooftops and in the shadows, just like the Batman. The green tinged haunted house aesthetic has been replaced with hues of cool blue and red neon signs. Rocksteady, the developers at the helm of the Arkham Trilogy, worked hard to make the Dark Knight's traversal work in such a vast environment, and it becomes as fun to master as the free flow combat. The world building and environmental storytelling are so rich, with easter eggs galore and hidden areas to explore. I'll never forget the first time I went down to the underground wonder city and the sense of, well, wonder. Add to that the Iceberg Lounge, the Mr. Freeze occupied GCPD building, Joker's Steel Mill. Every single area is so well defined and dripping with atmosphere. The Arkham series as a whole is up there with the comics and Batman the Animated Series as being one of the definitive versions of the character. I can't think of another comic book hero who has been so well represented in video game form. Anyway, why am I wasting my time talking about this one? You know how good it is, and if you don't, then stop watching this video immediately and go play Batman Arkham City. Number 4. Batman NES Version Here's another Batman game that I've played more times than I could possibly remember. Seriously, I play this game on like a weekly basis. Got 10 minutes to spare before I need to head out somewhere? I'll stick Batman on and see how far I can get. The platforming is as tight as a duck. The stage designs are creative and challenging, and the graphics are some of the best you will find on the console. This is one of those NES games that are hard as nails but totally fair. Every time you die is because you screwed up a wall jump or went into a fight unprepared. It's a game that rewards you for putting in the time to learn its every nuance and idiosyncrasy, but most of all, it's just incredibly fun. Number 3. Spider-Man 2000's Spider-Man, developed by Neversoft, is about as close to a perfect video game as it gets. There's not a thing that I would change about it. It's bright and colourful, and heavily stylized after the comics. It's full of easter eggs, non-stop action, and an all-star cast of Spidey bad guys. And that soundtrack by Tommy Tallarico absolutely slaps. The 90s Spider-Man cartoon was my gateway to not just the webhead himself, but comics in general. So considering how much this game borrows its style and tone directly from the show, I'm probably a little biased. I would even go so far as to say that this is the closest we ever got to a Spider-Man the Animated Series video game, putting aside the one for the Mega Drive and SNES, because it sucks. Reno Romano voices Peter Parker here, and he does an amazing job at capturing Christopher Daniel Barnes' voice from the Animated Series, but puts his own spin on things. It's an all-time great Spidey performance, and often goes overlooked. It's fair to say that this game was the Arkham Asylum of its day, breaking new ground for superheroes in three dimensions. And as I said about X-Men Mutant Academy in the last video, it's hard to articulate just how mind-blowing it was to see a 3D Spider-Man game for the first time. Just imagine it, the last Spider-Man game you played was Maximum Carnage, and then this game comes out. I mean, come on, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Neversoft were also the studio behind one of my other favourite games of all time, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Spider-Man felt like the first time that the developers behind a game really understood and cared for the comic book source material. It's the perfect distillation of everything I loved about Spidey growing up, and though the years have not been kind to the stiff controls and wonky camera, I don't see it ever being replaced as my favourite Spider-Man game of all time.
Number 2. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes Panels to Pixels would not exist without LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, it's as simple as that. In 2013, I was at university having not picked up a comic book or video game in close to 10 years. Like everybody else in the world, I'd seen the Avengers the previous summer, and was blown away by it. And now, here I was with a student loan burning a hole in my pocket and too much time on my hands. So I did what any self-respecting academic would do, and I bought a pre-owned Xbox 360 with a copy of LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. And this game single-handedly made me fall in love with comics and video games all over again. It reminded me what I adored about Marvel Comics as a child, and sent me on a mission to scoop up every superhero game I could get my hands on. Unlocking every character token, and discovering new heroes that I'd never even heard of, sent me looking for answers in the comics, and ignited a collector mentality in me that burns bright to this day. The story, its cast of characters, and the various Marvel landmarks on display make LEGO Marvel Super Heroes one of the greatest love letters to comic books I've seen in any medium. And let's not forget this ending, which is still the most badass thing I've ever seen in a superhero game, even if it's also adorable. Number 1. Batman Arkham Asylum Batman Arkham Asylum, here it is, the one that changed everything. Some people prefer Arkham City, and I get that, but to me Asylum is leaner, meaner and the ultimate Batman experience. For starters, the story is tighter and makes more sense that it takes place over one night. Arkham Asylum is a masterclass in video game storytelling. It's paced to perfection with each A-list Bat villain turning up exactly when they need to, to keep the player engaged. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill prove once again why they are the quintessential voices for the Dark Knight and the Clown Prince of Crime. As for Arkham Island itself, I much prefer the Metroidvania style over the open world of Arkham City. Each section of the map is so well defined, with every area having its own distinct atmosphere. The asylum itself is claustrophobic and imposing, serving me Haunted House meets Silent Hill Hospital realness. The pea soup green mist that hangs over the entire island seals the deal on a game that brings out the creepy horror elements of the Batman mythos. The free flow combat system would be tweaked and augmented throughout the series, but here it is in the first game, fully formed and as good as it ever was. Besides an underwhelming final boss battle with Titan Joker, Batman Arkham Asylum never misses a beat and is the gold standard for superhero video games, often imitated but never bettered. Phew, well there we have it, my top 20 comic book video games of all time. To be honest, the hardest part of this list was figuring out what to leave off. There are so many great games that didn't quite make the cut, and it probably would have been easier to do a top 50 list. Hey, maybe at 50,000 subscribers, you know what you've got to do. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. If you want to see more stuff like this, then you should definitely subscribe to Panos Pixels, and don't forget to let me know in the comments if you agree with my list. Alright, take it easy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!